Ah uh, yes, scheduling and flaking, the true RPG horror stories. I'm a forever DM and I see everywhere that sometimes you need to be a player to get out of a writing slump. So I joined a random game I found on the Discord server. We were playing a dungeon crawling module and had a session every other week. This game didn't start out great and didn't really get better over the course of four months. There were issues getting people to show up, getting the VTT to work, getting people to stop fighting with the DM, etc. I told myself I would stay for five sessions and I did and then I left. There were approximately seven players at a time in a session and people would leave and we'd get more people because the game wasn't to their liking, which fair, I complained about it to my own players. But add in the pets everyone had and combat took forever. Not to mention the difficulty was dialed up to 13 slash 17 instead of 11. I did not make my character to be an optimized combat person so I went down every fight and I usually wasn't the only one. And this game was almost 100% combat too. I spent a lot of time not talking. At one point, the DM introduced homebrew rules. They weren't written down anywhere. Sometimes to our favor and sometimes they were just weird. But we didn't know them until we came across a situation where we interacted with said rules. One player got super heated about it. I was too, but I was going to talk to the DM out of game about it. And we argued about it for close to an hour. The same player did more reprehensible things because it's what my character would do. But that's not the story today. It was session 5 for me. I'd missed a session and the group hadn't met for a few due to reasons. And we lost a few players and I got to switch my character build around. We had opened a door and there was a thing to fight and we filled into the room to fight it. There was another thing coming down behind us and we were scared because it's very likely we would go down in waves. The guy before me takes their turn and the DM says, And say hi to Twitch everybody. They send a link to their Twitch channel. It's real. We're being streamed to Twitch. Thankfully, we were only using audio and not video. I immediately clam up and only say what I needed to. I run to the thing and stab it. Sneak attack, disengage, run away. As far as I'm concerned, no one consented to being recorded because it was never brought up. There wasn't a session zero. With the ever-changing roster, there wasn't a point, I guess. And Twitch had never been mentioned even in passing. The other players sounded incredulous if they spoke afterwards. And the DM just thought it was fun. I didn't argue about it though, I just left after that session. There's a lot here, but it just seems like inexperience to me. The DM is running a game for seven people without proper combat flow, and there's not much story. It's just simple, hit things until they die, or at least that's what it sounds like to me. And of course, the Twitch thing. Look, no matter if you're a new DM or you've been DMing for years, you should be able to know that recording people without their consent live on the internet is not courteous at all. It's bad, don't do that. This DM takes not understanding boundaries to a whole new level. So guys, if you are going to record your D&D game, that is up to you. But it needs to be agreed upon by the entire group. There's not much to say here. Don't record people live on Twitch without their consent. It's kind of just generally bad. Well, anyway, next story. I would love to play a Star Wars RPG for once that doesn't fall apart before session one or turn into a small scale horror story. However, this has yet to happen. Here are some snippets. The hypocrisy is strong with you. Joined a game of Edge of the Empire focused around the Outer Rim in the original trilogy timeline. Basically, Wild West roleplay in space. Two players refuse to tell the rest of the group what they are playing before the game. Weird, but okay. Then the first session begins. Both of them present their characters. Both are lightsaber wielding Mandalorians. One being a full fledged Jedi, the other dual wields them. In a post Order 66 setting. I kind of roll my eye about it and try to ignore it. Until one of the other two loudly complains to the DM. He can't dual wield lightsabers. There are no Jedi left to have trained him in it. He would have had to cut off his own arms. This is argued by the Mandalorian Jedi with one lightsaber. Dual wielding Mandalorian joins the argument, shouting at the Mando Jedi for being jealous that his character is just cooler than his and that he has to suck it up. Their insults last for about five minutes before the DM just deletes the discord and is never heard from again. Edge of Empire. 
Edge already included. Joined another Edge of Empire game. The DM clearly stated in the recruiting post it will be a heroic campaign with ex-bandits and other fringe society people rising up to be the hope of the masses. Also, no Force-sensitive characters, at least not to start. They hint that we might unlock Force potential later on. I join the Discord. A handful of other people do the same. I think about playing a medic or something like that and ask around what they think. They want to play Sith. Every. Single. One of them. The DM states again that this is Edge of Empire, it's a heroic campaign, and there will be no Force-sensitive characters, let alone trained Force users. They throw a tantrum. If you don't want us to play Force users, why offer to play Star Wars at all? They leave. I remain. The DM tries to get new people and doesn't find any. The game disbands before session one. This is really confusing to me personally. I don't understand why everyone wants to be Jedi and Sith in Star Wars. One of the coolest parts of Star Wars is just the normal people. Smugglers, bounty hunters, fringe society folk trying to survive in this huge galaxy. I love The Mandalorian because it focuses on just a bounty hunter. Yes, he gets special throughout the series and he finds a Jedi and finds a greater purpose, but a lot of the show just focuses on the small folks, and it's awesome. That bit where the Mando and a group of villagers and Cara Dune need to fight off an ATST, and it's a huge struggle for them. Like, the ATST is a massive problem for these characters, whereas for like a Jedi, that would be just another Sunday. For these people, these normal people, it is a big deal. That's one of my favorite parts of Star Wars. I don't understand why everyone wants to be these god Jedi character. And besides, if everyone plays a god Jedi slash god Sith, no one is special at all. There's no point to it. So yeah, I've never understood this sort of push for Jedi and Sith in Star Wars games. Uh, this isn't the first time I've seen it. It happens a lot. But yeah, very confusing to me. Look, point being, if everyone in your game is some super special, crazy, powerful character, no one in your game is a super special, crazy, powerful character. Next story. This is an old one, so some of the details might be a bit fuzzy. When I was in high school, I found out my local game store was starting a new D&D 3rd edition group, and I was excited to try, so I joined along with a friend from school who will call Kate for the story. Kate made an elven bard and wrote a pretty great tragic backstory that gave her PTSD, depression, and an intense desire to heal not only her own sorrows, but the sorrows of others through music. The DM seemed to really latch onto the depression part and ask questions like, Does she really have depression? Or is she just one of those edgy attention seekers who thinks it's cool to slit her wrists? That should have been a first red flag, but we were young and naive. What do you mean flag? That's a straight up attack. Anyway, session one rolls around and the DM is going through each character one by one, describing our morning in the starting town and basically setting everything up for us to become an adventuring party. When he gets to Kate, he starts by asking her to make a will save. She rolls a 14. The DM describes how she wakes up feeling like she's being smothered by a blanket of anguish and sorrow, and then takes her character sheet, rips it in half, and says, Sorry, your character was unable to overcome her depression and spent the whole day in bed, so she misses the plot hook and never joins the party. Then hands her a blank sheet and says in the most arrogant tone, Heroes don't have depression. Kate spent the rest of the session pretending to make a new character, and neither of us returned for session two. Good move. And besides the fact this guy is just... a dick, the idea that heroes don't have depression is really confusing to me because a lot of protagonists go through intense mental struggle. A lot of very fan-favorite protagonists go through a lot of mental struggle. Take Frodo in Lord of the Rings, he has to bear the weight of the ring and for a long time he has to deal with the sorrow and anguish of having to carry this burden across Middle Earth and doesn't always handle it like a champ. Sometimes he needs other people to help him shoulder the burden. There are a lot of protagonists that just have mental illnesses. Take Tony Stark in the Marvel movies. I know that this story happened way before the MCU, but bear with me. He has PTSD in the third Iron Man movie. They say it, I think, directly, and definitely show it to the audience. And he's still a really compelling character. I mean, this just does not make any sense to me at all. Guys, don't be a dick to your party members, don't be dismissive of mental illness, and don't be like this guy in general. So this happened a couple years ago. I was in college and I was part of the group that built robots for competitions like BattleBots. So as you can imagine, a pretty geek-filled environment. 
we had the tradition to throw a game night after the finals to chill a bit to gather everyone. The team had about 60 people, but since we were working on multiple robots simultaneously and each 3-5 to five person team was assigned to one, we rarely all gathered. And I was going to run a D&D one-shot for a couple people that had never played and one or two people that had currently no table. So I tell everyone that because we'll probably just do a one-shot, I was going to run Lost Minds because it was right after the finals so I wouldn't have any time to plan. I helped a couple of people with their characters, all level 1s, that's important. So cut to the game night and we are wanting to play. And a classmate of mine who was also on the team shows up to the last second and asks if he can join with the tiefling bard. I said sure and ask him to give me the sheet because I was reviewing everyone's stuff since they were all mostly new to the game and had forgotten to fill some stuff in. When he hands in my character sheet, it's a level 3 character with 20 plus 5 on note. He knew it was a level 1 table. He said it was a character from a campaign that had gone nowhere and that he had rolled all the stats. Naturally, I said he had to make a new sheet. Oh boy. The dude threw a huge tantrum over how I was nerfing his character and how I wanted to steal his thunder and that I was an awful railroading DM and stormed out of the room. We studied in the same class for two more years and never brought that up again. Honestly questioned myself if I hallucinated that sometimes. Everyone wants to be the star of the show, or at least every problem player usually wants to be the star of the show. This is definitely a problem. Don't try to make an overleveled character, especially with everyone being new to the game. There's nothing worse than having someone that is more powerful than the rest of the table and spotlight hogging everything. That's not great. There is nothing much to say here other than pointing out the weird social dynamics that come after falling out in D&D. It is kind of hard just to go back to whatever you were doing before someone freaks out at you over a tabletop role-playing game. It's a weird social dynamic overall. Look, guys, don't freak out at your DM for telling you to keep the game fair, especially when everyone's new. All right, that is going to wrap it up for today. If you guys enjoyed this episode of RPG Horror Stories and you want to let me know, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more episodes of RPG Horror Stories by me, then please do subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get all of my content in your subscription box. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down to the comments down below. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.